Hello and welcome to the Crazy Sock Lady YouTube channel. My name is Kay and in this video we are going to be chatting about light bulb progress keepers and why in the world do I use so many of them? <laughs> that is definitely 100% the question that I get asked the most when I post pictures of my socks or share them on the podcast and I have my markers all the way down the sock. It never fails. There is a question, why all the markers? What are those marking? So we're gonna go over that today. I am also going to show you where I mark for my heel flap, how I tell which round I did that on, how I count the rounds for my foot, and how I measure using a sock roller for the foot of my sock. So if you've watched any of my vanilla sock tutorials, I have vanilla socks on DPNs, nine inch circulars, magic loop, and two circulars. You probably already know all of this information, but I thought let's do a separate little video talking about all of these things that have to do with these light bulb progress keepers, the reasons why I use them, etc. so that there's a place to go if you have a question on why I use them. First up, let me share what this yarn is so that I do not forget throughout this video. This yarn is by Tina's Twisted Fibers. And this is her Rusted Steel colorway. The yarn is her 75% Superwash BFL, 25% nylon fingering weight yarn, 100 grams to 464 yards. Gorgeous, gorgeous colorway. These are gonna be socks for Eric. Um, as you can see, I'm doing these Magic Loop, just the vanilla socks on Magic Loop pattern. Knit two, purl two for the ribbing for 20 rounds. That's what I typically will always do for my socks. And then I've started in on the leg. So let's chat about these light bulb stitch markers. So I have here one of the tins that I'm now selling in the Crazy Sock Lady store. I've put these together with my favorite notions. They are out of stock at the moment is when I'm recording this video, but they will be back in stock soon. So things that they include are 50 rose gold light bulb progress keepers because I use a lot of them. <laughs> I've got my favorite, I'm not gonna be able to get any out here. My favorite little stitch markers. There we go. As well as my favorite tapestry needle are all included when you purchase one of these. I like to use a pretty tiny tapestry needle. You'll have seen that in any of my tutorials as well. So that's what's included in here. Lots of light bulb progress keepers. I have already placed some of these every 10 rounds is how I place them. So I did my 20 rounds for the cuff, then I knit a little bit on my leg and I place a marker every 10th round. Why do I do that? So my reasoning for doing this, I'll show you how I place them, um, how to count your rounds, how to place them, and I'll show you where I mark for the heel in a moment. But why? Let's talk about why in the world I place so many markers on my sock. So for me, as I'm going through my first sock, I will already know, I'll have an idea how many rounds I wanna do for the leg. Typically lately, it's been 50 rounds for the leg. That's the length that I've been liking. So I don't measure my cuff. That's typically always 20 rounds unless I'm doing a shorty sock. And I don't measure my leg. I just know how many rounds I like for those. 20 rounds for the cuff. Right now it's 50 rounds for the leg. So no need to measure for this. I just count my rounds and place the marker every 10th round. What that allows me to do is I used to always have a little notepad and I would write out 50, like one through 50, and then I would cross off each round as I did it. It doesn't take that much time to do that. It does work. But in, in the end, I decided that's just taking up more time than I want to like pause at the end of a round and mark it off. And then to think, oh my gosh, did I mark off that last round? And then have to go back and count the whole leg to see how many rounds I'd done. 
since I'm someone who just likes to do a set amount and not measure. So I decided I was going to start doing that for the leg of my sock every 10 rounds. And then I can just count by tens, 10, 20, 30, 40, and see, okay, I've done 40 rounds. I don't count as I'm going with the 10 rounds. I'll just knit a little bit and then go back and count that little bit and see where the 10th round is. Then I will place a marker for my heel on the 50th round. That is a different marker, whether it's a different colored light bulb progress keeper or a different progress keeper altogether. I'm going to use my team cuff down. See if that'll focus there. There we go. My team cuff down progress keeper here. That's in the Etsy shop. I'll pull this up just to make it a little easier to show you. So when I'm counting, I count the V's. See that right there. I do not count that. That's number 10. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's where I'm going to place this marker for my heel. All right, marker placed for the heel. I did it off camera. Sorry, it's a little hard to do it holding it out like this without really being able to see the stitch up close. My eyes are not as good as they used to be. Okay, so place that for the heel. That's marking the round that I started my heel flap on. For this round, I knit across the front, and then on the back, I started the heel flap. You can see more details on that on any of my vanilla sock tutorials. So I will do that. Now, I also get a lot of questions when it comes to counting my rounds, marking for the heel, when do I start counting for the foot? So I don't measure the cuff for the leg. I do measure the foot. So you can see here, I've done my heel. I finished my gusset decreases as well. So what I will do, I don't have a set amount of rounds that I do for the foot. I do start counting for my foot from right after where I placed this on. That's all foot for me. That's what I count as my foot. So for the first sock of a pair, when it comes to the foot, I will measure it. I use my sock ruler. I've marked different people's sizes on here to know when I need to start the toe for them. So when measuring a cuff down sock, there, I will say there will be a full video tutorial on how to use a sock ruler coming out a little later in July. That will show how you can measure a cuff, a leg, toe up, cuff down for the foot, all of the things will be shown on that. But for this, I thought, let's go ahead and just show how to do cuff down um, and measure for that. So to measure cuff down, what I do for my first sock is I always measure the foot for the first sock. To do that, I just line up the back of my heel turn. and then roll that up. Make sure you're not pulling, because look, you could get a lot of stretch with that. You don't want that. You just wanna lay it out, roll that up, and see where you're at. It has inches here on there. There's centimeters, so you can easily see how much you have done. So I will measure my foot as I go on the first sock. On the front though, I will also mark every 10 rounds as I'm going down the foot. Then when it's time for the second sock, I do not have to measure. All I do for the second sock is see how many rounds I've done for the foot and then I do that to match on the second sock. When I'm knitting my second sock, let's say this is done, I've got my second sock over here that I'm working on. Instead of pulling out a lot more light bulb markers, I will just take them from this sock. So if I've knit a little bit into the leg and I can see I've done 10 rounds, I'll take this first 10 round marker and move it over to the second sock. Then the second, third, fourth heel placement, I will just continue going down, moving this marker over. It really allows me to see where I'm at in the sock. And I think it's fun to see that progress as you go. So I think that breaks it down. I measure 
the foot of the first sock, counting my rounds as I go by placing those markers. And then it just makes it fast, easy, quick to see how many rounds I've done counting by tens down the sock for each part of the sock, the leg and then the foot. And then I just make the second sock to match based on how many rounds I did on the first sock. And I keep track of that by moving these markers over one by one. I hope that this video was helpful and answered any questions that you might have had about these light bulb progress keepers, how I use them, why I use them, and maybe you'll give this method a try. And if you do, let me know below how you like this method. I find it much easier and quicker than the way that I used to do it, which was marking my rounds or doing like tally marks or something like that. And I don't have to worry about always having a notepad with me and having that out. This is just even more portable. Socks are so portable and this I believe makes them even more portable. I can just throw this little tin in my project bag, make sure there's one in every bag and I'm set and ready to go. And all I have to do is pull out a marker and mark it as I go. And then the second sock just seems to fly by with going by the marker placement on the first sock. So let me know below if you give this a try, what you think of it, how you like it. And I will see you guys again on the next video. Until then, happy knitting. Bye.